Yumiko the Kitsune. Hattori, do you remember the tale of the wise fox spirit and her giant magical hammer? Yeah, me neither. Oh come on now, it even says in the lore that Yumiko isn't that well known. With mediocre strength and defense, but a high amount of agility and dexterity, Yumiko's stats combine with her weapons to make a very interesting combination of fast attacks combined with a nimble and power weapon, the bow and hammer. As a player who enjoys getting damage on opponents with positional pressure, I can honestly say that Yumiko is my personal best legend, as I found a certain synergy with her signature moves that I haven't been able to find with any other legend. I remember watching a bow guide on YouTube a few months ago, made by Boomy himself actually, and when he got to Yumiko, he actually said she sucks, which is not true at all! Kaya's worse. But in all seriousness, while he's still probably better than me at the character, there's plenty of really good qualities on Yumiko, both on her bow and hammer. So here's how I'm going to split this guide. In the first half, we're going to cover a crap ton of tech. First regarding her bow, such as best bow combos, reads, kill options, what each signature excels at and what it isn't super good at, and then we'll do the same for Hammer. In the second half of this video, I'll be applying some generalized tips for Yumiko based on the division you're in in ranked 1v1s, which, in a sense, can even be applied to other legends as well. You know, a more general section of the video. So, here we go, I suppose. First up, you have Bow. The more nimble of the two of Yumiko's weapons, Bow is a fast, high dexterity weapon that can be used to input quick attacks at long ranges. I'll get into what Yumiko's signatures do quickly enough, but let's do a quick overview of what Bow's light attacks can do real quick. Side Light, a quick to hit close range attack that serves as a great combo starter. Down Light, a very long range attack that fails to cover closer ranges but serves as a great combo starter as well. Neutral Light, a great anti-aerial attack that comes up very quickly and has long range. Not very good against grounded opponents. Side Air, a nice solid aerial attack that can be used when landing on the ground to start up a combo or attack. Neutral Air, a great aerial move that can catch a lot of jumpy players essentially free to throw out as a move because it's super hard to punish. Down Air, great offstage move to punish reckless ground pounds and to do gimps with although a lot less effective on stage. Recovery. Most effective when trying to get back on stage, covers a great distance when opponents are trying to edge guard you. Also good for catching aerial opponents who are trying to fast fall. Ground Pound. A small hitbox, but spikes downward with a lot of force. Alright, now that's over and done with, let's see what Yumiko's signatures can be used for. Neutral Signature. Great for gravity cancelling offstage to get back on edge, other than that essentially useless. It can be used as a jump read but there are much better moves for punishing jumps such as neutral airs. Side signature. Solid fast signature that deals about 20 damage. Yumiko travels while doing this signature, making her less vulnerable to punishing while in the middle of the signature if it happens to miss. Down signature. Good for using on the edge if your opponent happens to be knocked off stage. Other than that, essentially useless. Now, since Yumiko is a bow user, it makes sense to go over some of the most universal combos known to her and a few basic reads as well. True combos with the bow include downlight to end light, downlight to neutral air, downlight to side air. Downlight to Recovery Side Air to Neutral Light Neutral Light to Neutral Air Downlight to Neutral Light into Neutral Air Downsick to Neutral Light These next couple of combos are combos that are also technically true but were way too hard for me to input and thus will have some dodge frames in them but they are technically true although not very useful at all down air into neutral light into neutral air. Side light into neutral light. Down air into neutral light. And side light to jump chase dodge neutral air. While not true, some of the most common combos with Yumiko's bow will include side light, down light, neutral light, 
side light into side signature, side light into down light into serre, into chase dodge ground pound, down air into chase dodge neutral air, and recovery into chase dodge neutral air. Now obviously you're not going to be able to input crazy long combos without people trying to dodge, so I decided to put in some dodge reads here as well. There are so many different dodge and jump combinations, so I'm not going to cover some super obscure ones like up back dodge combined with a jump, but I will cover some solid follow up options for some of the most common dodge reactions. For neutral dodge reads, it's often best to wait a bit after inputting your first combo starter attack, then continuing with the combo. This works for wakeups as well as shown here. For forward dodge reads, one of the best combos to do would be side light to chase dodge forward to pivot side light. For up dodges against the side light with bow, I've personally found that a dash jump neutral air works extremely well for catching those. For back dodges, it's simply best to keep chase dodging forward and continue with the combo without pivoting. Side light into chase dodge side signature also works as a good kill option for a back dodge read. Even with all the knowledge in the world on bow, there's a difference between knowing the technicalities of it and finding an actual playstyle on it. Bow doesn't do as much damage as more heavy hitting weapons like axe or hammer, but its quick move set more than compensates for it. Offensive approaches like dash downlight can cover massive ranges and can lead into combos like downlight neutral light recovery for some quick damage. Bow also has an amazing offensive kit offstage as well, able to catch many jumps with moves like falling down air, side air, and gravity cancel side light offstage. Bow's ground pound spikes downward with a ton of force, and can kill very early if landed. As I once heard in a video regarding the weapon, Bow is extremely reliant on closing distance using movement. Once you master movement techniques such as fast falling and dash jumping, your ability to throw on moves with bow will be that much quicker and harder to punish. I recommend going for true combos as much as possible as they are undodgeable and provide free damage without you having to risk your own health going for a read, but other than that, however you want to play bow is entirely up to you. Whether you prefer a more gimp heavy playstyle, an aerial playstyle with side airs and neutral airs as your main attack of choice, or a grounded, long range, downlight heavy playstyle is entirely up to you and what suits you best. Now we have Yumiko's second weapon, and one I see underused by a lot of Yumiko mains first starting out, the grapple hammer. Unlike the bow, the grapple hammer usually is a lot slower of a weapon with a lot less range to some of its attacks. However, while the hammer has a different moveset than the bow, I argue that it's just as good of a weapon, one that I play better with in fact. Its grounded kit of attacks is extremely fast, and each of its aerial attacks all hit with a ton of force, killing or at least throwing off stage on very early healths. Like Bo, let's do a quick overview of each of the moves. Side Light, a quick low damage attack move that can cover a little bit of aerial and works as a solid punisher for whiff moves. Neutral Light, the best attack to throw out on Hammer if you and your opponent happen to be stacked good for covering the very close distances that side light cannot cover. Downlight, the main damage buildup starter on hammer. Side air, one of the best moves in the game in my opinion. Sends opponents flying with massive amounts of force and is quick to throw out with quite a bit of damage to it. Neutral air, essentially the same thing but with an upwards direction instead of sideways. 
down air, an attack that catches opponents below you and lifts them up. A nice approach to use if you are a more jumpy player and an opponent misses an attack below you. Recovery, an attack that picks up an opponent above you and scoops them back down below you. Absolutely insane offstage, it can be used as a powerful gimping tool combined with other attacks such as weapon throws and ground pounds. Ground pound, like Bo's ground pound but with a bigger hitbox and just as much force. Now you have Yumiko's signature moves on Hammer. A lot of them are very different than most signatures, so let's get right into covering them. Yumiko's neutral sig on Hammer is a lot like Teros's neutral sig on Axe. It grabs hold of aerial enemies and spikes them downward. It's a really good signature to use offstage for gravity cans. Side signature. A fast signature that covers a long range and deals a good amount of damage. The only bad thing about this signature is that there is a middle spot in between where the attack will not hit, so be sure to space the attack well. It can also be used as a good way to get back on stage when gravity cancelled. Down signature. This signature's better use is better demonstrated in a real life game actually. So let's take this rank match I had against the 1900 guys. This signature gives you a ton of stage control if your opponent is airborne, and it's completely free to throw out. It limits the options of where my opponent can land, and distracts him as well, making it one of the best signatures in the game in my opinion. Alright, now you got the true combos. Unlike Bo, however, most of Hammer's true combos are pretty easy to input, so I won't need to make a second section for that. Hammer's true combos include Downlight into Side Light, Downlight into Gravity Cancel Neutral Light, Downlight into Turnaround Down Air, Downlight into Dash Jump Down Air, Downlight Sail, Downlight into Recovery, Side Air into Neutral Light, Neutral Light into Chase Dodge Side Light, Side Light into Neutral Light. And, of course, the Russian Mafias. As for regarding dodgeball, but bigger combos that build up more damage, some of the most solid ones that I've found include Downlight, Side Light, into Neutral Light. Side Air, into Neutral Light, into Side Light. Neutral Light, into Side Signature. Side Light, to Neutral Light, to Side Light. Side light to neutral light to side light to chase dodge down light sail. Side air to neutral light to side light to down light sail. Weapon throw into neutral light. Down sink to neutral air. Falling dare into recovery into chase dodge dare. And when you get good enough with hammer and bow, you can kind of makeshift combos of your own with little uh, true combos inputted with chase dodges to make a bigger combo such as this. And now we cover the last section, dodge reads with hammer. In my opinion, dodge reads with hammer are a lot harder than bow, since hammer is a more of a power weapon instead of a technical one, so most of the time I just go for straight up combos anyway. But I may as well cover some dodge reads in hammer, just in case your opponent does happen to have a clear dodge pattern. For neutral dodges, you have side light into chase dodge neutral light. Simple as that. For back dodges, you have chase dodge into side signature. For other hammer legends, disregarding Yumiko, a weapon throw will have to do. Hammer doesn't really have any long range coverage options. For forward dodges, you have neutral light without the chase dodge. If you chase dodge, you're just going to overshoot the target. For up dodges, you have chase dodge up into side air. Depending on the damage, you can combo it into a drop down down light stair for some free extra damage. And finally for wake ups, just wait until they finish their attack, then neutralize them. And now, we've come to the end of the first part. 
We've covered all the true combos regarding Yumiko's weapons, a huge amount of reads, and what all the moves are best at and can be used for, along with the most popular combos. And really, after that, that's all I can teach you. I can't teach you your own playstyle because the way you play best is going to be based entirely on what works for you. I have a super fast, almost quick attacks only playstyle, but that may not be what works for you. If you prefer a slower playstyle, heavier on using signatures to punish, then that's perfectly okay too. Hammer and bow, just like all weapons, are super versatile in the way you can play them, and that's something I love about this game. One character is not restricted to one playstyle, so go out and experiment and don't let anything discourage you. Alright, if you're still watching, thank you for watching this far. Now we have part 2, the rank division. Once you believe that you've mastered your weapons well enough, you can start playing ranked 1v1 games to try and progress through the ranks in Brahalla, starting in silver and trying to work your way up all the way until diamond. I'm going to give tips that I found that helped me progress from silver all the way until diamond, so let's get right into it. The first tip I can give when going into ranked is to expect to lose. If you go into ranked thinking that every day is going to be a good day, then you're going to end up disappointed. I've played this game almost non-stop since January of 2019 and getting from platinum to diamond is still a huge struggle, where on my off days I sometimes play like a 16 to 1700. I drop my fair share of games all the time, and many players when you look at it only have around a 40 to 60% win rate because of all the practice they're doing. I've said this multiple times in essentially every single guide I made, but I can't stress this point enough because it's the most important one. If you have the determination but not the knowledge, then the knowledge will come in time. If you have the knowledge but not the determination, it'll be impossible to get where you want to go. So like I said in the end of the first half, try not to let anything discourage you, because you're going to win some and lose some. Alright, now with that out of the way, let's get into the individual divisions yourself and see what they're all about, and the main points you need to master now to move from the division you're in to the next one up. Silver Division, Starter Division, Sig Spammer Division. This is the division all Brawlhalla players that log into the game start out in, and where the race to diamond begins. Throughout Ranked, you'll see a bunch of players honing their strategies and gameplay, making it sharper and sharper the higher up you go. And that's exactly what you're trying to do as well the more you play, in fact, it's what you're trying to do right now, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video. So let me give some tips that might be able to really help out and cover the next couple of divisions after. For the Silver Division, the biggest tip I can give is to learn the concept of punishing. Punishing by its very definition in fighting games is capitalizing upon your opponent's mistake, such as a whiffed move or an overextension, and using it to get free damage. This is a concept that will stick with you in every single division, the only difference in the divisions is that getting punishes become harder and harder. However, in silver it shouldn't be too bad. Take this game for example. I logged onto a friend's account that was currently in the silver division to play this ranked game, and while I admit I was playing pretty badly as well, my opponent was throwing out a ton of punishable quick attacks. In silver, all you should concern yourself with is punishing. Don't even worry about how you do it, with signatures or combo starters no matter. As long as you can consistently get more hits on your opponent than they can on you, then that's the key you're going to need. Now you may be asking me, what's the best way to avoid attacks? Well, one of the most beneficial things you can do to avoid attacks is to recognize when your opponent is going to try to attack, almost like a spidey sense, and then either jump or back up so that it's out of range. If you see here, both of these players are just mindlessly throwing out attacks without very much concern as to how their opponent is going to respond, with the core throwing out a ton of side late recovery combos, 
on gauntlets. The only reason this is working is because the Volkov doesn't know how to dodge, and that doesn't give him very much of a chance to apply pressure back. However, all you need to do to counter this is to have a little patience, and back up while a mindless sidelight is thrown out. Your opponent will overextend, and you'll have a good window to get an attack of yours in. Then, all you have to do is get a combo in and back up to where nobody can hit each other, a position that is called the neutral rinse and repeat. The reason my guide to silver was so basic was because it's not very hard to get out of silver. Somewhere around account level 30 to 40, many people break the 1400 ELO barrier and get into gold, where people start to get serious and where I can actually provide better advice. So here you have the gold division, the league in where many people actually start trying to play competitively and where a lot more opportunities open up, so let's begin. The first tip I'm going to advise against golds is to perform dodge reads. Now contrary to what I stated in my earlier video, you don't want to just read forward dodge reads, try to read every dodge in general. If the opponent has a specific dodge pattern, use one of the reads I taught in part 1 to counter it. Out of sidelight, these reads essentially work at every health and kill percentage, and are usable whenever and they leave no window for attack with stun time. Ordinary combos will no longer work as much as many golds know how to dodge, and ordinary combos will soon prove obsolete, unless an opponent's dodge has been exhausted. The way to exhaust those dodges is with dodge reads, so go for those. Even if your opponent has a random dodge pattern, try and go for a shot in the dark anyway. It's better than a guaranteed miss when you try and go for a basic combo that's not true. The second thing I want to cover is how to win the neutral. As I had covered earlier in my how to rank up from gold to platinum in Brawlhalla, there were three main ways to win the neutral and that was either by using quick attack options, baiting out moves from your opponent or sig spamming. However, one approach option I had missed is weapon throwing. My stupid little platinum self had, in fact, missed out on one of the most effective ways to approach. Especially in maps where there aren't a lot of platforms, weapon throwing is a super good option to aggress against passive players. A lot of golds will either neutral dodge, dodge forward, or jump out of pure reaction to an attack they don't expect. So be sure to read this as best you can, with something such as a pivoted grounded attack for example. Having exhausted their dodge, you can use this for a super good opportunity to build up damage, and all with one weapon throw. So those are two super main tips that can really help you a lot. A third tip I want to cover is, with golds is how to edge guard. Many golds have learned to dodge away from the wall after something such as a hammer ground pound since many times after going immediately for the wall they have simply been gimped. However, this can actually be used to your advantage. All you have to do is just wait on the wall until they've exhausted all their options and do a dash jump ground pound when they've used their last move to get to the edge. If you happen to be below your opponent with Yumiko, there are plenty of options for edge guarding as well. If you happen to be in the right position for it, you can force their dodge by using a recovery with hammer, and with that use, they'll have to return to the wall unprotected, to which you can counter with a gravity cancel neutral sting on hammer. Bo, on the other hand, pr prefers an elevated position for edge guarding, with many nice moves like I had mentioned earlier such as side air and down air to send them back into the depths of minus one stock. And now for something a little more personal. I've had a lot of golds complain to me about certain weapons they struggle against, so I decided to give some advice on how to counter these weapons, assuming you're playing Unico, of course. Lance. The best way to counter Lance is to learn the distance of how far side air can cover and space yourself so that they land themselves right in front of you when they attack. I used to have a lot of trouble against Lance personally until I picked up the weapon myself. Now it's way easier to counter Lance being a Lance side main as well, knowing all the distances of the attacks. Axe. Axe is pretty hard for me to counter actually. It's one of my hardest weapons that I struggle against the most, however something I've noticed a lot is that a ton of axe players play pretty grounded, waiting for you to miss an attack so that you can punish with a side light neutral or a true combo. A good counter to this is dash down light. 
Bo probably has the longest range attack in the game with dash down light covering a huge amount of space. So beat them at their own grounded game. Scythe. Scythe cannot hit opponents directly below them. Mirror their movement so that you're in their unhittable zone, then rain down hell with your various aerial attacks. Hammer. Hammer players are super jumpy, including me, and love to fish for ciders. Use this to your advantage and don't be afraid to throw out jump punishes such as neutral airs. And those are the four most complained about weapons. If you have one you personally struggle against, let me know in the comments and I should respond. But other than that, those are the three main tips you need to know to get out of gold. If you want a more detailed explanation uh, with some more minor tips regarding how to get out of gold, you can always check this video. And for the last section of this video, we have Platinum to Diamond. Now, not everything I'm going to state in this guide is going to work for every player in Platinum, as it hosts one of the widest diversities of playstyles that I've ever seen, some of them even countering mine. With that being said, every playstyle has a weakness. Platinum players are really good at most things, with the only reason they can't get to Diamond being that they always have either a bunch of slight inaccuracies in their play, or a glaring weakness to bring down everything. For example, one of my biggest weaknesses is that I overcommit to a ton of combos, making myself really vulnerable to punishes, or even killing myself. So with the Platinum to Diamond guide, some tips will not be as technical, but more mental, as the mental game is a huge part of higher level divisions. The first step in beating a Platinum player is to learn the opponent. To learn their dodge pattern, to learn their favorite combo to input and how to dodge out of it. It's okay if they take a lead on you in the first stop because they're using everything they have for you to read like a book. Do they dodge up out of a side light combo? Play super floaty and rely on a lot of down airs like the scythe users they are to aggress. Take notes of what they're doing and adapt your playstyle as best as you can to make sure that they have the hardest possible time hitting you and ensuring that you have the easiest counters at your disposal. The next tip I can provide is to take control of the stage. Stage control means knowing that your opponent cannot advance to a certain area because of the fact that you know that a move you throw out will cover that area and will damage them. Using the weapon you have, you want to position yourself to where your stage control will overpower his and you have more area to move around. In response to your stage control, your opponent may try to jump or make an attack out of panic to which you can punish. Stage control is a kind of positional pressure, which YouTuber Stefan Afro mentioned in this video of his that mine is essentially a ripoff of. But that's besides the point. Stage control is crucial to learn at Stage control is crucial to learn and master if you want to journey from platinum to diamond, and the way to obtain stage control is by practicing the next thing I'm about to mention below. Movement is a part of the game in general, obviously. I mean, even in Silver, you use movement to get around the map. However, movement is so much more than that. Especially regarding Platinum, movement is what allows you to get hits in general, as most Platinums are no longer foolish enough to throw out random moves for you to punish, and you'll start to have to earn your damage by outspacing them. Remember your best aggression options, such as Dash Down Light, and remember which true combo would be best in every scenario. Signatures will start to become increasingly hard to hit, so it's good to have some kill options in there like downlight recovery with bow, or simple side air with hammer. Don't get too greedy with the reads and put yourself in a position where you'll be vulnerable, simply reset to neutral if you have to. One of the final tips I can give is to randomize your dodges. Practice this. While it's never a good idea to constantly dodge forward, sometimes constantly dodging back and up isn't a good idea either as it starts to give your opponent a smaller selection to choose from for reads. I'm guilty of this as well. I dodge constantly in vertical directions such as down and up, and higher platinums and diamonds can sometimes read this, so try to dodge differently each time. Experiment with diagonal dodges, wake up attacks, whatnot. Your opponent won't see it coming. 
And that's about it for this video regarding Platinum Tips. There's honestly so much to cover in Platinum that I probably will end up making a separate video about it. For now, you'll have to do with my brief coverage of what may go on to Platinum. And with that closing word, I wish you truly the best of luck on the road to Diamond. Platinum is super tough. Some of the 1900s are going to be the toughest opponents you'll face yet. And there's going to be a ton of new challenges thrown for you at the very moment you start ranked. And you're going to have to be prepared for that. But if you can learn quickly enough what your opponent does, you can roll with the punches and counter appropriately. I look forward to hearing what your experiences are after this video. Yumiko, the warrior Kitsune. In all reality, she's not a top tier character. She's not a Hattori, she's not a Mordex, she's not a character that's used a lot by sweaty players and I rarely see any Yumikos in high divisions such as Golden Up. Looking at the stats themselves, there are only 12 Yumikos rated 2100 and higher across all of Valhalla, so I felt that I had to make this video to represent my main and to hopefully teach some other Yumiko mains out there trying to improve. If you are a Yumiko main who has learned something in this video, then the weeks I've spent editing this video was totally worth it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.